Excuse me too. You know, there a lot of people try to say things happened to me. And from 13 on, I remember my family. They were great, loving. But there's reasons why God gives us that. It's some kind of protection. If God has protected me, do not try to get me to go under hypnosis. Amen. I'm not going to let somebody mess with my brain. This, there's a reason I do not remember. Amen. So be careful of people that try to tell you things happen to you or to do certain things with your mind because that is God. That's the way he protects us. So from 13 on, I was overweight from 300 pounds. Don't, I've dieted my whole life, going back and forth, trying to do this. Every diet out there, I was on. But I could not get control over this. Anything else you told me to do, I could do. And because of that, a lot of my dreams that I had for myself, I wanted to be a psychiatrist, I wanted to be... You know, I wanted to be married, I wanted to have four to five kids, but, you know, 700 pounds, and I'm little, many men are looking at 700 pound women. And you can't blame them either, you know, because you didn't see a lot of 700 pound people walking around, because most people like me are in their house, they don't come out. And that's sad because society makes them that way. Our addiction, we're a walking billboard. And, there's, and society tries to say, you know, obesity is rising. We know that. But there is so much more. There's many more people than you realize because they're in their homes and they're dying in their homes. Mm -hmm. They're alone and they have no one. And I get these letters. But the craziest thing that happened is that I went on a journey to find out what this was about. What was obesity about? And so I had my friends. I said, just video me. I don't care what I'm doing, what I'm eating. If I get mad at you, video it. I'm going to do a documentary. And when I find out, when I finally get to my goal, that's when I'll do it. I'll edit it. You know, I'll be fine to show anybody. Not knowing what God had planned. But I knew it was my destiny. I'm telling you, every one of you that are here, you have a God destiny. You're not here by accident. You're in this generation. You're in this time. He puts you here. Don't let anyone tell you any different. We have a lot, I have letters, I cannot even read them all. But people that are being told daily, they're ugly, you're disgusting. Not even because you're, there's people from the opposite of me that are starving themselves to death. But we're the same. Yeah. We're exactly the same. When society looks at them, they feel sorry for them. Because they look like they're dying, they look at us and say, you're gross, you're disgusting, you're a gluttoner. But that's society. The thing is, we are human beings. And we're both real people that God created. And no one is ugly. God created nothing ugly. And you look in the mirror and you tell yourself, let me tell you something, there's life and death in the power of the tongue. Yes. Right. It is so important what you tell yourself. And we are so busy beating ourselves up. And I know this because I get the letters. I get the people when I go to Ruby's walks, when I go to my events, the emails. No one can tell your, no one can tell me anything worse than I can tell myself. When I'm not on track, when I'm off my program, now I'm not like this. I had to totally come to a place right now where I'm on a journey, but it's not my journey, it's God's journey. What started out to be a journey about obesity and Ruby, it's not even about Ruby. I am, I am just a little part of what God's got planned. And it's about other souls, and, and it's amazing how God orchestrated this whole thing. Yeah. And when people ask me about it, and the show got, it was the number one show. It's known all over Europe. It's everywhere. And these women would write me, the women that wear black things over there, they're not allowed to show their face. They start sending me stories because they would hide and watch it on the internet from their husbands because they're not allowed to even go on the internet. And they would tell me how, for some reason, they would look at this show, and like I said, I didn't get it. I didn't see what everybody else was seeing, but it was a God thing It was bigger than me, that it was touching so many people's lives from every addiction out there. So one of the things, this journey, when I came, when I started to do this, and I prayed about it, and God kept telling me, when they asked me to do a TV show, 
you know, it was a, like three different networks wanted to do this. But I wanted to, you know, I had to pray about it. I didn't want them lying about it. I had seen other reality shows, and I know y'all seen them, and some of them are so like, that cannot be true. People do not act like that. But they do. Trust me, there is a world out there where people act like that, and that scares me, but it's true. So, but there is some people that they make act certain ways, but I was not going to let them. This is a true addiction. I didn't want them lying about it. So what happened was, I had already visioned, it's so crazy because there's like, Three exact things that God has shown me before the TV show even came up. And one of them was that my documentary, and I thought it was a documentary, was going to be helping so many other people. And I knew that because I felt like once I found out what this was about, obesity, it's an addiction. Once I found out what it really was, it was going to help others because people are dying. I get letters and it kills me. Somebody says, I lost my sister, she's dead. She's only 31 years old. And Or somebody says, I lost my mother to this fight. She's been trying, and she cannot beat it. This is, you know, you get diabetes from it. It is a silent killer. Just because it's food, y'all, I'm telling y'all, we're putting this in our mouths, and it is poison. And it's not only the silent killer physically, it's silent kills you spiritually, emotionally every which way because what happens you're not productive you feel ugly you feel gross about yourself and you cannot be productive for god for if you're married your children you know i knew george's kids love them my nephew and niece i can't even go out and swing with them go to a park with them do normal things that a mom could do and i have people writing me about that and i get it even though i'm not a mom I understand what that feels like. I understood that felt like, to, I told Georgia, she goes, will you go pick up Zachary from school? Because I was home visiting from California. I was going, Georgia, I don't want to do that because I didn't want to embarrass him. But these are the things we feel. You don't want to put your child in that situation. But one of the things I want to say is that when this vision, one of the visions I had, and it was like, God told me, and this is so weird, it says that one of the voices, one of the places that you will go where the whole world will be able to see you and know you will be on the Oprah show. This is before the TV show. I said verbally to Georgia Dan and all of them, I said, y'all, I'm going to be on the Oprah show. And they're like, you are so crazy. I said, now I'm telling y'all right now, I'm going to be on the Oprah show. I said, and it's going to be about this obesity. I said, it's going to be about this whole journey. And so... And I will never let it go. I said, I know I am. I said, it's one of those things that God tells you, you see it, you visualize it, and you know it. No one can take it from you. At all, honey. And no one can. Georgia calls me, and I was living in L.A., and she said, Ruby, I got bad news. And this is before my journey even began. Because even though God tells you something, 10 years ago, and you're not doing it tonight, you're still going to do it. Now, you may not think you are. You may get off track, because that is what Satan's going to do. He's going to do everything he can to get us off track. And no one, let me tell you, a lot of people don't realize, I mean, really think about who in the Bible had it easy. Not one person in the Bible had it easy. Not Abraham, not David, a man after God's own heart. Everything they had to go through, a story, even though he's going to be a king. Here's Moses, and I always compare Moses to me, and it's so crazy how God always showed me the Moses story. It takes me to the woodshed a lot. He has to. He really does. And it's crazy because Moses is going, Lord, I can't talk, you know, in front of people. He didn't feel like he could. He didn't feel like he had, you know, I, that's how I was. I said, I'm not educated enough to go talk in front of people. There's no way I can do this. And God was telling me, yes, you are. And that's the story. And then he had his friend Aaron. All Y'all know the story. Y'all don't. You can see me after. And I'll tell you. Something. Because it's really unbelievable but how God himself is telling Moses this. And Moses, that fear that overrides even God's word. His, the Bible, the word of God, it overpowers. When God tells you not to fear, we still are fearing. And the man himself, you know, is going to use somebody else, but God made a way, but it took forever. And I'm just, it feels like forever, but God's got a plan. So what happened is Georgia calls me and says, Oprah just announced that she's going off. She's not going to have a show any longer. Mm -hmm. I said, at first I went, what? Are you kidding? I said, uh-uh. 
I said, I'm telling you right now, she's wrong. She's gonna have that show. And she's gonna read really me. She's announcing everywhere. She's not gonna have a show. I said, I'm telling you right now, yes, yeah, she is. <laughs> then she comes out like probably three weeks later saying she's gonna do it another three years. Me not knowing why, but I ended up being on the Oprah show four times. Mm. How crazy is that? Praise the Lord.